What's up, YouTube? Scott, Scotty Tradition, back with another video. Uh, gonna make a video today um, of a couple pickups that came in over the last few weeks in January. Um, got a couple of cool cards that came in, and um, then just a couple. We'll talk about uh, the YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame a little bit, and then finish up with a Wisconsin sports update. Uh, so, first and foremost, um, picked this up in early January. Again, I'm trying to really stay more focused this year and I actually want to pick up less items overall um, as opposed to picking up more. So, um, but came across this card and actually found out that um, the seller was Garrett Card Cutter. So, um, was able to contact him and uh, make a, what I thought was a great deal for the card. And let's get into it. So, this is the uh, 1961 Tops Jim Taylor autographed well, Jim Taylor passed away I think it was back in 2018 so this is a beautiful example um, there's been five of these authenticated by PSA DNA so not a ton of these out there um, really nice looking signature of the Packers great running back Jim Taylor um, uh, been watching for the for this particular card for a while to come up and this is the first time I've seen it come up in quite a while um, there's there was a couple other ones that have either were ungraded, uncertified, or were very light in the auto department. Uh, but this one is pretty awesome, so was excited to grab that one. Uh, thought it would be cool to just share the uh, raw or the uh, non autograph version of the card I have. This is graded mint nine. Kind of a sneaky good card just because there's no tens ever graded so um beautiful example one of my uh favorite sets just love the rich colors from 1961 tops football so was real excited to be able to get that guy in from garrett thank you garrett for working with me on that and then um another card that had came up that uh been on my watch list for a while was this guy this is the uh, donald driver rookie card uh, autographed and authenticated by PSA DNA. So one of the Packers all-time leading receivers. Just was real happy to get this one. Beautiful auto there. It says it's a mint nine auto. Um, I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. Pretty much looks like all of Donald Driver's autographs that I've ever seen. So beautiful example. The card's only graded a four. You can see the crease right there on the lower right hand side. Not that important to me. I just wanted to get a nice example of his auto on his rookie card. So was pretty excited about that um, and then I, here's an example uh, of his uh, rookie card I have for the PSA set registry and uh, this is a real beauty here in gem mint 10 these cards were incredibly tough take a look at the back it's like a green darkish border and they chipped really easily there's you hardly ever see them in gem mint condition uh, this one's only pop two and there's been mini graded over the years and only two ever graded a 10. So just a beautiful card. Uh, this is a set that I've kind of slowly been working on. Uh, kind of the ancillary autograph set to go along with the Team Hall of Fame set registry. Of course, Jim Taylor is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. So um, just kind of a fun project to do. Um, you don't see that many autos come up, but every now and again you will see, see one. And that was the case with the Jim Taylor and the Donald Driver. So really excited to be able, be able to add those. Um, other than that, no no big cards coming in this month so far. Just kind of relaxing, kind of easing into 2024. Um, just a quick touch on the YouTube Sports Card Hall of Fame. Um, I think, see, today's Saturday the 27th. I believe the voting goes through the end of January. So the 31st, which I believe is either Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week. So make sure to get your ballot in by then if you have not voted already. Video ballot. Um, as of right now, I kind of follow along uh, with Jake. And um, just to make sure we're not missing any videos and things like that, we kind of bounce off each other like what ballots we've seen so far. So I've counted 82 ballots so far. Um, watched 82 different videos. Uh, so far, I'd say there's four channels that are kind of separating themselves a little bit. Um, and then that fifth channel... Uh, that gets into the Hall of Fame this year is going to be kind of more of a little bit of a battle, I think. So um, 
you are thinking about making a ballot and you haven't already, um, I would definitely encourage you to do so. Always awesome to just uh, be able to use this as an opportunity just to recognize um, channels. It's just um, it's something that makes somebody else feel good, so, right? So why, why wouldn't you do that? Um, at, at, at its simplest form, that's basically what it is. So there's definitely a lot of ballots from uh, people that are currently in the YouTube Hall of Fame that I have not seen yet. So uh, not seen their ballot yet. So hopefully I will see those in the next coming days. And that could potentially make quite a difference in the balloting results. Um, so we'll see We'll see how that goes. But just uh, wanted to encourage everyone to vote if you have not voted yet and if you are eligible to vote. Um, and then last but not least, we'll do a little Wisconsin sports update. Um, the biggest news around here, um, obviously the Packers getting knocked out of the playoffs last year kind of stinks, um, but it was a wild ride this year. Uh, it was fun to be a part of. Either way, uh, it still hurts, though, when you, you have a chance and you maybe should have won, and maybe a more experienced team would have held on that fourth quarter, but this was just not meant to be for this team for whatever reason. But I do kind of like where they're headed and their prospects. Um, obviously, after the season ended, they... Uh, fired their defensive coordinator, Joe Barry, who is actually interviewing in Chicago, which I find hilarious. Um, I say have at it. Um, <laughs> more than likely, they're probably interviewing him to try to see if he'll give away any state secrets from, from the LaFleur offense. Um, but we'll see what happens there. And then they also uh, moved on from their strength and conditioning coach, who's been there for the last number of years. So um, just way too many hamstring injuries this year with like Aaron Jones, Christian Watson, Eric Stokes, and others. Just these weird soft tissue injuries that are not from actual gameplay that happen in practice. Like it's just kind of bizarre. Uh, I'm not sure if it's necessarily the strength and, strength and conditioning coach's fault, but um, clearly they're looking to get a different set of eyes on it and uh, just trying something different. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Packers have begun to interview defensive coordinator candidates. Um, there was uh, a couple candidates that were already mentioned, um, a lot of positional coaches around the league. So I think uh, mentioned, and then not, and then also Brandon Staley, who was fired from the Chargers this year, who had a really good defense when he was with the Rams. However, <laughs> the Rams also had Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. Um, two elite, elite players at their position. So it's kind of hard. Uh, and I think it was actually uh, Brandon Staley that taught Joe Barry uh, that defense. So I don't know. Uh, I would have mixed feelings about that. Um, I kind of want the Packers to go away from this Fangio style of uh, zones and don't get beat over the top and keep everything in front of you. Like, I just, I don't want like that mentality. Um, you know, the Packers, you saw against the 49ers, like they played a really good first half and then it kind of, they got rolling against the Packers defense. And on that last drive of the game where Brock Purdy drove the 49ers all the way down the field, they were playing that same defense, which basically allows Brock Purdy to dink his dunk his way all the way down the field and waste all the time on the clock and then score a touchdown at the end. So I do not see this as a feasible defense when the game is on the line. It just doesn't work in my opinion. And uh, that Fangio-style defense has not worked out very well around the league. Uh, most of the Fangio-style defense folks finishing in the bottom third of the league in defense. Um, the more successful defenses right now are definitely the attacking-style defense, the aggressive defenses that put pressure on the quarterback. So I personally would like them to go in a different, uh, just do something different. Um, I just think that that the way the Packers play defense just doesn't work when the game is on the line. And I don't like that. So we'll see what happens. Um, they're bringing in some position coaches too. I think the linebackers coach of the bills is coming in for an interview and the secondary coach for the Broncos and a few others. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then the other big news of course is bucks coach Adrian Griffin getting fired. Um, he had a 30 and 13 record, but also the bucks have had the easiest record in the NBA so far this year. And for those of you who actually watch the Bucks on a daily basis, you know that something doesn't look right. Um, last year they were number four in defense, and this year they are 22nd in defense. And that's a problem. You're just not going to go anywhere in the playoffs with that kind of 22nd ranked defense. Got to have at least a top 10 ranked defense 
top 12, at least something like that. Um, I know the Bucks lost Drew Holiday in the trade. Um, they brought Damian Lillard in, but I, in my opinion, they still have Giannis, who's like a defensive player of the year candidate. Brooke Lopez, who is a defensive player of the year candidate. They're just not really working well together, um, unfortunately. So they bring in Doc Rivers. I don't know if he's going to be able to turn anything around. Um, it's kind of weird having a coach come in halfway through the season. However, this is a veteran-led Bucks team, so maybe not as hard as it might be on a younger team. I guess we'll kind of see how that goes. Um, I wish him the best. Not that necessarily that big of a Doc Rivers fan overall, watching him over the years. I, you know, I've seen him fail, I guess, more than have success um, with some pretty good players on teams that he's had. So maybe this time will be different, maybe not. At this point, the Bucks don't really have a choice, but um, also it just wasn't going to work under Adrian Griffin. Um, they need to utilize Giannis and Dame kind of complementing each other a little bit better on offense. Um, the Bucks have had a really good offense this year. I think they're like either two or three in the league in offensive efficiency. So, I mean, obviously that's really good. But to me, it's more on the defensive end. You can't give up like 135, 140 points to the, the Detroit Pistons and expect to actually have a defense in the playoffs. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the players will be able to like at least respect and listen to what Doc has to say and just he gets them playing uh, a brand of defense. Um, but as players, they have to buy in too. Like it, the coaches can't play defense. As a player, you got to go out there and want to play good defense. And they do have some of the pieces for that. But then, you know, obviously Dame's not really known for his defense and Malik Beasley not known for his defense either. But um, he actually really does shoot it really well. I think he's the leader in three-point percentage in the NBA, uh, Malik Beasley. So we'll see what happens. Um, got some time yet before postseason play. So hopefully they can figure something out. Um, otherwise, that's it. Um, hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'm going to probably throw on some playoff football here in a little bit. Uh, we got Chiefs and Ravens and then Niners and Lions tomorrow. I think the Ravens have a better team than the Chiefs, and they're playing at home. Um, but also, the Chiefs have Mahomes, and he just is like a little bit of the darling right now. So I don't know. Um, I almost lean towards the Chiefs for that reason, but we'll see. Um, I think the Ravens have a better team, but Chiefs have the better quarterback who's been through this before, even though Lamar Jackson is also really good. We'll see what happens there. And then Lions and 49ers. I think if Debo Samuel plays, it's it's a pretty big difference than if he doesn't. Um, I think if Debo plays, it's going to be a little hard for the Lions to beat the 49ers. If he's not playing, um, I think there's a puncher's chance, and maybe the Lions do not make the same mistakes the Packers did down the stretch. So looking forward to some good good football games. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and um, we'll talk to you again soon.